to our season of safety. This is the second webinar where we're looking at the force limitation as the uh, primary method that gets used. Um, so essentially, I'm Ruben Carrick, technical sales engineer, and this is Ricky Week, sales manager. And now we can go straight into straight force in. limitations. Cool. Primary methods of control when you're using as force limitation, we are generally looking into the safety edges themselves. Uh, where they get put into the gaps. Obviously, part of it goes into the survey, and then we'll have, lastly on this slide, we'll have a section where we'll cover the non contact solutions as well. And I'll be asking uh, questions around. That's fine. That's why that's you're here for. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Um, right. The main thing is obviously, if we're looking at safety agents, we essentially have um, in our swing gate uh, and sliding gate server forms, we have these two diagrams, you might remember from them. Basically, show us where to put the safety edges. Yeah. So you have essentially the leading edge. There is a safety edge gets put on here, and there's also one at the back end. And within we have the portable safety edge. This gate that we have is that only has ones at the back. It doesn't have the ones at the front like the diagram shows. And then you also have on there the swing gate safety edges. So um, essentially, they show the positions where you normally fit them. And one thing we will generally request them to do as well is actually tell us where you plan to put your transmitters if you are using a wireless system on there. Yeah, all this information is available on our website as well for downloads. So the actual survey forms with the safety edges. And we also have a calculator available on the request for the swing gate. On the next slide, along, what we've got here is essentially in terms of the portal. So if you look at this area behind a gate where you have the uprights, uh, obviously where the safety edge goes in distance from the safety edge to the sliding gate itself, there's actually some, um, like the drawing basically shows like a test object, and depending how far that test object can go in depends on where that safety edge can go. Yeah. Uh, Mission same we shown before, if you have a mesh gate, then you know safety edges can be a little bit further out, like it shows there. If it's on a bar like here, then they essentially end up getting closer and closer to it. Ideally, we're looking at using angled safety edges so yeah. they point in towards the actual gate itself. Rather than this is to reduce this gap to a maximum right now. Yeah, I mean, if you can reduce the gap, um, yeah, to, with the safety edge, but getting that angle so you've got that yeah, so you mount. get so it goes back in as much yeah. as you possibly can uh, to get in there. But if you if we go to the next slide. If, once you obviously you're deciding if you're going to be putting safety edges, if you are using a safety edge or encoders, uh, or anything like yeah. that, essentially you need to also measure the forces. And what this uh, drawing is showing on here, we have on the uh, on the display is basically the actual forces that it's measuring. Yeah. So there are two key maximum allowable allowable forces you can get. Yeah. Uh, the main one, uh, as shown there. In the red is 1400 newtons for the crushing. Uh, that's for the impact, in one right. hundred. When you get into the crusher, uh, the draw or the shearing, uh, then it goes down to 400 newtons. And then the other bit that is kind of showing on there is it basically starts these force tests. They basically start measuring the force when they go above 150 newtons. Yep. And that'll give us the impact. And then you have 0.75 a second for the drop below 150. And then a further 4.25 seconds to drop below 25 newtons, and then after that time, usually stay remaining below 25 newtons. Okay, this is at the point where we reverse off. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Which is why one of the things that all the gates need to basically, essentially, they are force limitation. They need to stop, reverse. Yeah. Sometimes they stop, reverse, and stop. Yeah. Sometimes they stop, reverse, and go all the way back. Yeah. Doesn't make any difference which one it is. As long as, as, long as, as, long as the reverse and the pressure drops off. And obviously, if we go into the next slide. To comply with the force limitation requirements, you know, there are things you can do to yeah. help. Um, obviously, because the impact force, that first hit, is always dependent on how heavy the gate is and how fast it's traveling. Okay. You can't affect the weight of the gate, but you can generate the actual speed with different pinions or different uh, settings of the different box. You can also change for settings. So there are settings on control boards, there are settings on motors that you can adjust to help reduce that impact force. And as we were saying, it basically generally needs to 
the game to actually reverse and back off. Um, just a point there, if you were using the inherent safety of an operator and you're getting close to the, the passable 40, then with the safety edge, that could be a passive rather than an active safety edge. Uh, yes, it could be. Because uh, essentially what they'll do is they'll reduce the force. Yeah. And when you put a edge that's not an active, uh, or it does absorbs that hit, so it gives the operator more time to basically wrap right. off. Yeah. Um, the only thing to remember is it's generally it's best to use encoders and anthropometrics. Yeah. Are usually done for impact. Uh, because in the shear and drawing, the like the way the curve goes, um, like the actual impact, yeah. the boards can't really pick that up because it's a because gradual it's increase and it's moving, and and it's moving still. Um, so that's why it's usually for those areas where you have the shear, be so get, you'd have an active safety edge to actually okay. tell it that something's actually gone wrong. And the other thing obviously get is safety edges. Different safety edges react differently from other safety edges. And that's where we're looking at the very profiles of um, exactly. You've got yeah. small, medium, large generally as yeah. you as all the foot. But if we take the assumption that you are going to be using um, safety edges. Uh, if we go to the next slide, uh, we don't have to actually measure the forces on that edge. Uh, it's not just, uh, it's not considered sufficient to basically just fit the safety edge and say, yeah, fit the safety edge, drop down. Yeah. You actually need to measure the force onto it. And okay. to do that, we need a force tester. The one we're using today is the microtronics. Yep, blue. Blue force. Yeah. Blue force. Uh, basically, Bluetooth yeah. uh, ability onto it. And this is what we sell. Yeah, as a unit itself, and the kind of thing we recommend in stores to have. They don't necessarily need to use this one, um, but essentially this is the one we can supply. Uh, but as you can see from that slide, that it's essentially a case of where you do the tests. Yep. The first test it actually tells to do is the full speed impact test. Okay. But that's uh, when it goes properly before slow down. Before it gets to slow down, which. Okay. Uh, now, the recommendation is basically do that test at any distance that equals full speed. Okay. So personally we always suggest do that test first of all. And for the purposes of this test we're going to be using the half of the extension being full speed and 300 mm extension being the slowdown zone. Okay. Just for us. So this is just for the impact. Yeah this is just for the impact. So obviously you turn your force sensor on. Yep. Do a little beep. And then you get yourself ready to do a force test. Now last thing I will say is don't put this surface against the object you're going to be testing against. Always use the other side. So okay. this end, and the extension ends a bit that you use. So if I put that up against gently, uh, the full speed test is essentially about halfway up the gate. Okay. So if you give me a trigger, please. Now the unit will still remain analyzing for. Uh, the rest of the time, so it's going to be adding five seconds. Yeah. And obviously, if we just check, check on here, if we go into that test, the impact force on down was 205 meters. Happened for 0.3 of a second, so it took 0.3 of a second for it to go below 150 meters again. Yeah. And then it was static force, the last the 4.25, the average was 19. And then we got left with five technically at the yeah. end. So it's basically the screen story. So that would be at length. That right. is a full pass. Yep. Uh, so it's actually it's, the maximum there would have been 1400 newtons. So we actually had we were below right. 400, so we're well under. So that is a very good pass to have on that. And on the impact, it's just at one point you're testing. It's just at one point on there. The next one that you do is the start of the slowdown range instead. Yep. So if I drop that so back there, you're crushing it. Yeah. This is when we're doing the crush test instead. So that's all for you. Thank you. There you go. And again, you're always having the extension piece against the... Yes, always the extension piece at the back. And essentially, it only takes a knock of 25 meters to start recording here. Okay. Uh, and if you double tap what you're doing, it will start recording and you get a false reading. So it actually comes in itself. So first test that you can do is essentially the slowdown positions are top, middle, and bottom of the gate. I'm going to do the middle just as an example. So if I put this here. Give us a trigger, please. Okay, it's going to come in. That will slow down. 
Yeah, that, this will be a pass uh, on there, but if I actually did readings, the slowdown force is now in the slowdown range, impact of 102, okay. so very much below the 400 newtons. Obviously, it never went above 150 newtons, so there's no recorded time. Yeah. And static, 14, and the remaining was 5 again, essentially what was left over. What you then do is actually then test top, and you test the bottom. From the bottom is... Is 50 mil up on the bottom, from the bottom of the, the, bottom of the gate itself, yeah. not the not necessarily the floor, the actual bottom yeah. of the gate itself. And obviously, we assume that the same <laughs> is right down to the bottom of the gate. Yeah. And what you then be doing is basically whatever the highest result are those three from the slowdown. Yeah. You repeat again to get you another reading to get an average. And why do you do you repeat that anywhere? Or Just been whichever the one was the whichever highest. Was the highest. Okay. And then you repeat again the same test using the 50 mil. Test so okay. essentially you remove all the attackers, remove the extension, just the slow down mode, whatever the one was the highest. Okay. It's just confirmed. I mean, there shouldn't be much of a difference if maybe to confirmation say onto it. Now, the other thing you do is if you imagine this is your force test, if you had safety edges in the shear in zone, like here, yeah. obviously, you don't want to be putting your force test to try and aim through the gap. On the bars and the safety edge. It's going to be quite dangerous for you to do that physically. So, what you can see from the slide is essentially measure those forces, you can't physically do them. So, what you're then doing is if the safety edge that you have on the leading edge of the gate is the same as the one that it is on the portals, yeah. then whatever results you're getting here can be made to be the same over here as well. They can be the same. So the gate doesn't change. Okay, but that's got to be your 400, not your. Yes. But then you have to have your four hundred. Yeah. So that's where you then take whatever you did in test one. Yeah. It essentially now has to be below four hundred newtons. Basically so here. Okay. So but your impact test would be under four hundred. Under four hundred newtons. We have on the test basically. Yeah. So you could assume I'm going to react the same. It will be reacting the same because as okay. long as the actual edge profile is the same and the control methods are the same, it's the same sort of market. Then it's the same result. It's just you can't physically do that test yourself. Yep. Okay. Uh, moving on to our next slide. Well, just uh, that's obviously so you've got six tests. Yes, yeah. here on the and the other side. On the other side, if there was a uh, obstacle in the opening direction, yeah, okay. if there wasn't anything on the opening direction, so there was no return walls on the gate, then your test that you're doing here is just the impact. Could be just the impact that you're covering there, and if the edge is the same up front and there's a back okay. leading edge, yeah. then we can assume it's the same test as long as the speeds are the same. Yeah, if the speeds change, then you have to, you've got fast driving speed, you have to, then you have to redo the test. Okay. Uh, the next ones are swing gates. So, if you you also kind of bring over a swing gate, now the principle is the same, right? I think everyone can see that nice and easy. So the principle is the same. So you do the same uh, full speed impact test on the gate. So if you can give me a trigger on here, it will probably be fails now, uh, mainly because we're going to be using uh, just the bare metal gate, and this always line is on the encoder solely uh, to check. So there is no uh, safety edges or anything going to be done now. So uh, when this comes back in again, so this is just to confirm this is a 400 mil driver. Just on the right. That's it. Yeah. Uh, there is yeah. no other safety device that has it on this thing at the moment. So uh, it's going to come in still full speed. So with the extension on, testing for the impact. Yeah. We're doing the full speed impact test. So maximum force is 400 newtons. Yeah. So this will finish analyzing. That is actually reversed. Yeah. Uh, what we got here is we now have an impact force actually of 201. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the only problem is though the impact time, so the reverse time was 1.87. Over. It was over the 0.75. Uh, we might be able to do adjustments on the other metrics. Yeah. Uh, not the other, sorry, on the encoder sensitivity so it responds quicker. But you won't know until you actually do another test. Yeah. So, if you have to repeat all these tests, uh, well, it's basically if, if it stops at the beginning, 
yeah. you then don't carry on doing the test, you yeah. fix the first problem, and then you move on. So if you had like on there, if you've done pivot to the point and then pass, then you have the third one, and then you made a change, you have to, you'd have to redo all of them again. And obviously, you then just do exactly the same principle with the swing gates uh, as we did with the sliding gates. Okay. So, so again, we were testing there was 1400 on the impact, yeah. and then again, it was 400 on the brush in the closing. Uh, it'll be less, uh, anything within part of the mill. So if you um, look at the part of the mill, it's kind of crushing point. Yes, exactly. So if you go to the next slide, obviously you can see the kind of basic test position. So we've done the position on the left. Yeah. We had a swing leaf delay uh, yeah. on ours. If you didn't have a leaf delay, you'd have to try and do it in the second, uh, the second diagram to the right, yeah. where you basically have to essentially time this between two gates. Uh, it's usually best to actually close the gate with the least leg, because if nothing else, it's much easier to do a force test. Obviously. And as you can see on the next slide along, you then obviously for the opening. Okay. Uh, obviously, if there is an obstacle there, you do it against the obstacle uh, that is there, as long as it's within 500 mil. Okay. Uh, the other thing that you then get is obviously along the bottom of the gate. Okay. That's where you could have a shearing point. Exactly. The crushing. So yeah. if your gap was more than 120 mil and constant throughout, then the maximum allowable force on that impact would be 1400. If it was below 120 and the ore was on gradient or going up against the curve, then the maximum force would be 400. Okay. 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 But this is a game where we basically take the same results as what we would slide it, test one result, and then apply them there. So obviously you might not have as long as you're safe here, it's exactly the same. Right exactly. Now. Okay. So it does make it relatively easy to do the force test yep. uh, onto it, and there's a lot less number of people do. Uh, the next bit along that you get is the non-contact solutions. Okay. Uh, so this is where we're looking at things like our x log Yeah, this is the laser gun. Yeah. The verticals. Yeah, so we're looking at, essentially, if we go on to the next slide, so you can use them on this line bit. Yep. Uh, but the thing is, you still actually need to do some tests on them. Uh, a few slides along, we're going to have the actual test on you can see them. Uh, but essentially, you're testing that the actual lasers are covering the areas of risk. So, as you can see in the diagram, they're covering the closing side and they're covering the opening side as well. So, if you were using these lasers, there's no force testing required no. because you can't get to the edge to no. test. Okay. There's no point doing it because, I mean, I've done something where basically turn off the lasers and then I'll force test it. Yeah. But that's the entire point. So, so if the laser fails, the game will yeah. just stop working anyway. Uh, so there's no point doing it that way. And if we go to the next slide, we then have an example of this when it's done on a swing gate. Yep. So on the swing gate, remember from last time, uh, we basically put on the rear top corners of the gate. Yep. So that's where they'll essentially go. And moves with the gate. So yes. it's sort of covering the whole area as the gate moves through its operation. Exactly. And it may or may not cover the hinge point. Yep. This is dependent on your hinge layout, how it's set up. Um, whether there's enough space for the X guard to be that close to the hinge uh, when it gets uh, in the open position. Uh, you know, it has happened where obviously you put an X guard on there and it gets brushed against the yep. uh, The next slide along will show us essentially on a barrier. So this one we're looking at horizontal lasers. So like a laser carpet rather than the yeah. curtain stuff. It, exactly. It basically goes, usually it goes underneath the gates and you get uh, a boom. underneath the boom. And essentially just be in the area of safety. So anyone goes into that field, the barrier will basically remain in the upright position, stay there until the area is cleared. And obviously the next slide along then shows us when it's done onto a um uh skirt barrier, barrier. Yeah. Uh, where it's on one or just one skirt. They really should be using two verticals, basically covering essentially the area of like either side of the gate. Okay. Uh if you so have you could do that with one horizontal. Potentially, yeah. yeah. That's where you, that's the other if one. If you're using the exit, like the, the exit, function. exit function for exit loop as such on the barrier. Exactly, yeah. That could be just as well onto it, just to get it onto it uh, to work. The other thing is potentially if you had like a mini, yeah. uh, you could potentially shoot. As long as it's not seeing that yeah. scope come down into the active area. But well, it's the case of taking the risk assessment, judging yeah. whether it is or not uh, for it. Uh, if you move along to the next slide, you can then see the actual test objects to get used. 
Um, so the test piece A, uh, you see on there, if you do odd math doors, uh, people recognize already it's the same cardboard box test, we call yep. it. Uh, it's basically a 700 by 300 by 200 mil box. There's matte black on three sides and a sort of a gray, like a glossy gray. Yeah, like yeah. Exactly. And then you have test piece B, which is essentially a rod. It's basically to represent an arm. Okay. So you go through. That's where in the previous slide you saw those little dots. Yeah. Those are basically the showing position to check. And again, um, a matte and a reverse style. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you can, so it gets a bit of a difference so you can see what's yeah, yeah. going on to it. And I think if we go on the next one, we, we have. We are going to go into on our third sort of presentation, we will go more into the product and what Yes, exactly. Yeah, that's what the third presentation is more for. The, this was more for looking at these parts. Okay. Uh, now, we are obviously going to be looking at some questions. Hopefully, yep. we have uh, some questions uh, mm -hmm. people can ask us uh, on this one. Okay. So, are we on this one? Yeah. yeah okay. On. Uh, Gavin Lovegrove, uh, we'll wait for yours. Uh, we'll start at the top. Can the wireless safety edge systems be wired to comply with CAP2 or the self contained CAP3? A wireless system can only be a CAT2 system. A, at the moment, there is no way of doing a CAT3 because a CAT3 will basically have to continuously monitor yeah. itself, whereas a CAT2 only monitors at the beginning of the movement on there. So it will use a little batch to die yeah. in the weeks of the years that it's taking at the moment on okay. there. Any other ones on there? Okay. Um, also from Gavin, uh, for a shear slash drag in location, should the safety edges be mounted on angled profile instead of the standard flat profile? I would only recommend the angled one, always pointing in towards where the obstacle is. The main reason for that is if you imagine those um, with the older style of safety edges, it's less on the new style X Yeah, actually, we've got the older style safety edges. Yeah. yeah. So okay. you're just angling coming in towards the gate. Right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, but we do have on this front of ours here, we do actually have the new expert line. Yeah. So the side trigger is a lot better. But like other safety edges, your side trigger is an action. You need to move the edge quite in. Give it a trigger. That's why when you have the angled pointed towards where the gate is, it gives you much better response. The angle profile doesn't make any difference. No, no. Whether you've got straight or an angle profile, as long as your measurements yes. get advanced. The same you can see the same, yeah. Because yeah. the actual profile is the same, just you're basically just angling towards angling. where the obstacles are going to be coming in from. Uh, anybody else? Okay. Uh, Peter Kelly has asked about uh, how we can use the software with microtronics to print a test sheet. This is actually quite handy. And yeah, it is, I have actually prepared this. So when we go back to the slide afterwards, uh, if you guys want to see it, you can see it on, on it. Uh, but I've actually shown uh, an example of that. In the Do you want to look at it now? Because I've got the question. So that's yeah, and then we can go back. So essentially, what you've done before testing, uh, you've got to do something with it, yeah. and you've got to basically put the data in. So if we go on to the next slide, the first thing you need to do with the, uh, so you're using microtronic software, is you create what they call a verifier. It's basically your company. Yeah, it's essentially, only you put in your company details into it, and if we go to the next one, you then transfer the tests from the force tester onto your uh, laptop or PC, and they will show up in the little red circle. They're basically all the way on there. The only thing to remember is they just have numbers. Number one, two, three, four, five, six, if I have my example. So it's make sure when you are doing the tests, you record which test number was for what. Yeah. So that when you actually bring them back, you're not having to try and remember, did I do test two at this position, or did I do it at that position? It can get quite confusing. Uh, if we go along, and the next thing you do is you create a customer. And you've got one more along. And it says you put your customer details. Yeah. So you might have, um, I think I've got customer XYZ, the example I've got there. It's essentially you might have a customer that has multiple sites. Um, or you might have those. You just end up, this will just populate over the, over the years with lots and lots of different customers. Go to the next one. Because once you've created that customer, you need to create a door. Uh, the software refers to those doors instead of gates. Right, right, okay. yeah. Door okay. but, but the same thing. Yeah. So once you create the door, you click on the next one. Again, you're going to be filling in, obviously, who did it, uh, where they are, where that particular door is. And also, there is a space for in the location. If you have a uh, customer that has a site, yeah. but they have multiple, in that site, they have multiple gates. So, and you obviously identify which one is which. I personally suggest you we select the uh, on there is basically how to do the test, what tests you do. Uh, I personally recommend to use a DHF 
preferred. We've got DHF barrier, DHF swing gate, and DHF sliding gate. Okay. It's mainly um, the DHF TS11 is what most of uh, is what all of our implementations are based around. TS11 covers. Yes, that's what we're doing. Okay. Uh, it is much easier to read than the full standards okay. onto it. And I always suggest pull up as many details as you can into it. So if you go along one more, you're then going to basically be uh, dragging and dropping. So click one more along. Basically, you drag and drop the test from the test list. They go into your uh, particular locations. Yeah. And I always recommend you copy instead of move. Because uh, if you do move, it kind of disappears off the test list. Yeah. And if you put it to the wrong place by accident, it's, <coughs> it's quite difficult to get it back uh, into the right location again. And if you click on again, and you can obviously see graphs. If you want to double click on them, they'll show up and see what the curve was. So on here, we've got 200 and something on the impact force. But it happened well within the time and stuff. It gives you the actual details. If you click again one more, uh, you can then, once you've filled them all in, drop them all in, you're basically going to want to have a print. Which is essentially going back now to the question that was originally asked. It's long winded, but we have to go through this process. And to click on that one, you can then fill in some more details. And then you'd click the bit where it says attach diagrams. And then you click the bit that says click uh, print PDF onto it. So as you click onto it, it'll then create, a, it will ask you where to save it, and then it'll create you a PDF document. And this would be for the installer to keep in their technical file? Yes. And only so for the end user if on request. But you, on know, request it. Uh, you don't have to necessarily give that fancy graph and all that because it doesn't. That's where your declaration performs the duty. So gives you that part. Any more? Cool. Um, Gavin's got another question. Um, how do you test along the entire bottom edge of a gate for impact and crash with the force test and not just at the end of the gate and the pipe? Uh, essentially, um, basically, you can't, uh, the test on there is one that is always a bit of a mixed one yeah. onto it because mainly trying to do that test doesn't actually work in the real world because you might not actually have anything to do the test against. Yeah. It might just miss it completely. Um, so you are basically doing the tip test. And if you were using those results and along, assuming that they're the same. As long as the profile along the bottom is the same as your leading edge profile, yeah. those results should be the same. Those results should be the same. You're looking at 400 yeah. rather than 1400. Exactly. Yes, yeah. the yeah. crush and yeah. okay. um, Admittedly, in the same thing, uh, we, when I did my DHF uh, course, yeah. um, Nick Perkins, who obviously uh, does most of the documentations for uh, the DHF, They'd actually done the tests, uh, like going from the tip to the rear of the gate, uh, using a bottom edge yeah. as a result. And it didn't actually change uh, more than 5 or 10% from the tip. So you got to about 200, 300 mil away from the okay. end of the gate, where they'll see more look at geometry, hinge forces will start climbing. Yeah. But it doesn't actually change significantly between that kind of distance. It's only in the last little section that it does. Yeah. Uh, so they have tried and do those tests to see what does actually happen, which is why they say whatever the test you get on the upright one, you can say that's for the down one as well. At the bottom. Okay, well. Anything else? Um, just moving back to the software, Peter's just asked, does it store all the results on your own computer or somewhere else? It stores them all on your own computer. It's um, essentially that test list. Once you finish, then you drag all your documents, all your things, you can right click and delete test list. Uh, onto it, so assuming you've already done the part the test from the actual, I uh, know from the uh, from the PC, okay. uh, they're already stored on in appropriate locations. Because the moment you transfer from force tester to PC, they are gone from the force, from the force tester. That's it. They're now the they're now on your PC. And if you want to transfer those data onto a USB as a backup, um, you can. You can. It will yeah. basically, uh, there is a uh, it's fatty. Yeah, but is uh, there a backup procedure within the software or? Honestly, I don't actually know. Uh, uh, something we can look into. In a, but it's something I can look yeah, into yeah. to check. Uh, I'm sure I can do it. I just don't know how you do it straight off the bat. Or we can, we can always at a later date pop a little answer. On yeah. If you'd like it, I can send you an uh, answer for you that later once I've had a chance to have a look <laughs> yourself on my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I've got one more question that was posed earlier. Yeah. Um, is force testing uh, limitations the same on a barrier? Uh, yes, it is the same. Uh, you accept the only thing that you get is on the barrier because as you, when the barrier is coming down, it's all crush, yeah. uh, irrespective. 
Um, it's always 400 meters. It's always 400 meters anyway. Uh, the best thing I would suggest to, to do with docents uh, is actually to download the DHF TS11, yeah, where basically all of this presentation is pretty much from anyway, and look at it on there directly. You'll be able to see it uh, where it's done. It is essentially two meters out and two meters up. Okay. Uh, then you do the test uh, to represent like an adult person uh, that it hits from the top onto it. And then if you were testing the rising of the arm, you'd be looking for uh, the uh, there's there's nothing there. There's nothing there. But it doesn't it's actually show you. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't actually even show you. Uh, or not there. It's like okay. there's nothing there. Uh, is there anything else? Or questions answered? Any questions? <coughs> Obviously, questions can still come to us yeah. afterwards. If there's anything we've not answered and you need more detail, then you just email in to us. Is it a legal requirement to force test, or is it a case to do safety assessment and reduce the risk? Um, if you're going to be using a safety edge, then you have to test the forces on the safety edge. Yeah, because uh, not uh, this is essentially from the DHF uh, TS11. Essentially, if you fit in the safety edge, you've identified there's going to be a force being applied to that zone, and your control method is the safety edge. You have to make sure that the forces being experienced at the safety edge are within the recommendation of the standard. Okay. Um, it's only if you're using lasers. So, but is it? Like you're saying, now, is it a legal requirement? Do you have to? Uh, so if you go do a risk assessment on a game and you say, actually, there's no hazards here, then really you don't need to do the full no, test. No, 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 if, you, no. if you find the hazards... You're always going to find the impact, though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because obviously the game's moving. So uh, generally, really, we would have to say... Yeah, so it is, though, it is. The only reason why I hesitate a little bit is recommendations. Uh, so the standards are recommendations from them. Yeah. And the only thing that is the law is the machine interaction. Uh, when you take your assembled machine, it becomes law at that point that is, and you basically should apply whatever the uh, latest recommendations are for the type of equipment you're doing. Uh, if you don't, then obviously, but as the installer, the installer is always liable for anything hazards that may happen. Yes, they are. In essence, they are still liable for it because they essentially they are the ones last person to yep. do something on the work on the gates, and they have to make sure that the gate is left in a safe condition. Whenever they finish any work on it. Last thing, just say uh, there will be links on the on our website in the news section, yep. uh, where you can download a PDF of all the slides that we covered today, and there will also be links to where you can watch uh, replays of the yeah, actual yeah. of this video itself. So thank you for your time, and we'll see you all again on the third one. Fifteenth November. Cool. Perfect. Thank you so much. Bye.